Hello, me fixing everything. And because there is always something to be fixed, and the summer is coming, the AC on this car is not working. Most of the AC systems troubleshooting that you need to do are exactly the same. So let's just confirm that the AC is not working. Okay, so let's start up the car. Uh, let's press the AC button. Can we see any change in the RPM when I'm pressing the button? No, not really. We'll press the max button and we'll wait until we can feel cold air. We can um, rise the RPM a little bit up to 2000 for example. And uh, I can tell you because I already did it, there is no change, it's like 25 degrees outside and um, it stays on 20, you know, no, it, it stays hot, so it doesn't work. Now, we can see that the button is lighting up, this means that the system, because it's an old car, thinks that there is pressure, at least that's what I think. So let's connect the pressure gauge, you'll need the pressure gauge, even if it's single one. Yeah, can be like this one. You need to connect to one of the ports. Okay, so you got you need to find the ports on this car. The high pressure is here, and the low pressure is far way back, and you need to take the duct here. But I think you can see what I'm doing. Maybe like this. Okay, so. Let's see. Um, let's see if we have any pressure. Uh, that's a R134A. So it needs to be at least around five bars. If there is anything, we're gonna pull. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna close the open the port. And we'll watch the needle as well. And we can see that even with fully closed, should be pressure here. Yeah, coming to this gauge, there is absolutely nothing. Now, if we open this one, it will leak because there is no safety valve, it will leak straight in the atmosphere. So, keep this one all the way closed. Okay, but we can see maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit of pressure, almost like absolutely nothing. So if we open it, yeah, more more like absolutely nothing. It just needs adjusting. Yeah, so there is nothing in this system. Uh, why thinks there is anything? I don't know. Could be a fault in the in the switch or something but definitely there isn't anything <clears throat> inside so we're gonna close the port we're gonna pull it out and uh, now I'll show you a little troubleshooting and I'll tell you a story now there is a reason that this system it's not charged and the reason is because there is a leak where the leak can be, could be everywhere. Could be about around this radiator, can be in the needle, can be an O-ring on this side, can be an O-ring on the other side, can be a rubber rubber hose that being sparished, could be on the back around the well, you can't see but could be on the back somewhere. There is seals everywhere. So we need to find the leak. Or it could be that someone repaired something on the front and uh, let all the free on in the atmosphere this could be a reason um, I had before uh, a Voxel and I can tell you this radiator is being changed okay and uh, the reason I know is because I'll just pull the, the, the needle there is a valve like a, a car valve in here and Oh, that was very loose. Uh, that was actually very loose inside. That could be a reason as well. 
um, original voxels have like a rubber ball and this one is this type of needle I got somewhere in the garage but I'm not going to even bother so this one is being replaced and I can't see any they usually have a sticker the original ones so there is a reason we need to find the leak you can find the leak in a few different ways cheap inexpensive and expensive way and the most expensive one is a uh, the, the I think the popular one you go to a person he charges your IC it lets you drive and if you're lucky you don't lose the freon if you're not that lucky you might lose it in a month and he might check for a leak I think the easiest way because you saw that there was no pressure which means that this atmospheric pressure inside so you're just gonna blow air inside now if you don't want to blow air inside you can uh, always um, fill it up with nitrogen or if you have a nitrogen bottle or even CO2 from from your uh, welder I was thinking to fill it up with CO2 if it had any even low amounts of pressure inside the system but because there is no pressure at all just fill it up with uh, no, fill it up with air uh, as much as my compressor can uh, blow which is 8 bars Eight bars is exactly, I think, 75 psi. No, 125 psi. Yes, 125 psi. So next step is we're gonna fill it up with a uh, with air, and we'll wait to see. Or we'll spray with a uh, soapy water, and we'll see if we got any uh, bubbles around around the radiators, around all of the pipes and fixtures that we can see and O-rings and stuff. I'll we'll just check for any a little bit more major leaks okay let me set up a compressor or something okay let me show you what I did I have to remove the air holes in order to get to the back not because I'm gonna hook up the low line because I'll fill the system through the high line uh, but because I want to spray the needle over there to see if it leaks and I want to have access to the back wall in order to spray some soapy water. Now, I connected, I connected the high line, yeah, and on the low line I connected the compressor. And now we're gonna, um, screw that thing here, which means that we're tapped into the radiator. And now we'll just get some air inside the system I'll start pumping it's good to open this thing as well the compressor will kick in at some point I can definitely hear a hiss from somewhere. You can hear it leaking, trust me on this one. Okay, so we'll leave it like that just so you can pressurize the back end as well. I'll pull uh, some uh, soapy water and we're gonna spray to see if we can see the, the bubbling. But when you can hear it, that's bad. <laughs> and I can definitely hear it. And I think it's behind. I think it's behind the fan as well. So exactly 8 bars. My compressor can pump 8 bars. So let's leave it for a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it leaks from. Okay, I think you can even spot the drop in the pressure. Yeah, you can definitely see the drop in the pressure. So what I'm gonna do now, just pump a bit more. I 
and I'll start spraying. I'll bring it with me. I should put the, the little torch on. I had my neighbor for a little chat so I had to stop filming. And uh, meanwhile, because I wanted to show him, I found the leak, but I'll show ya. As I told you, I can hear it, you see? Yeah. So let's pump a little bit more. And let's start spraying. Actually, you can even see it better. I'll just start spraying. There is two O-rings right there. So, <coughs> We'll get here and we'll get on this side as well, as much as we can. And we'll wait for a couple of minutes, so just as much as we can. Yeah, if you have a bigger bottle, spray with a bigger bottle. And now, instantly. Can you see the bubbles? Yeah. Right there. So you can see a little bit of bubbles right there. You shouldn't you shouldn't see like a balls of bubbles. I think we can see some on the back as well. Yeah? Bad. And here, this one. Oh, so many of them. I don't know if you can see them. I'll try to. Can you? Yeah, you can. Right there. That's the problem. The radiator needs to be changed. Now. I'll change the radiator, I'm not going to show you how, because it's different for all your cars, you need to find your model and make and all this, but that's how to troubleshoot it, most likely, uh, most most of the time is the radiator. And that's it, that's how to troubleshoot, with just a compressed air. Now, in the next video, I'll make a video how I'm replacing it. And um, I'll make a video of how I'm charging it, which is not going to be a completely professional video, but it's going to be good enough. That's it. Now let's find, I will recommend you using a brand new. If you don't have the money, buy one that you can return, because if you buy a second hand one, most likely it's going to be bad. Yeah, I will buy a second hand one, I will check it, I'm going to do the same, yeah, I will uh, re replace it here and I will pump air. And we'll see if it leaks. Yeah, that's it. Hope the video has been helpful to you. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.